Okay, so this video is going to show you how to run a simultaneous multiple regression in SPSS. Uh, the data file that we are using is um, SPSS for YouTube uh, underscore V2 or version 2. All right. uh, whenever you're given a data file uh, that's not your own, in other words, one that you did not create, you need to know what the variables are in the file. Uh, this is a pretty simple file, but uh, just to go over that briefly, to find out what variables are actually in the file, if you go to the file command in the upper left hand corner, click on it, and go down to display data file information, and then select working file, an output will come up and it will tell you all the variables within that file. Um, so the first table here, variable information, tells you the variable. Um, the measurement level that it is, um, its short name, that's usually under the variable column, its label, which would be the long name, <clears throat> and then the measurement level. More importantly is the table that's right below it, which are variable values. These would be your nominal or categorical variables um, in the data file and their coding. So you can see that the normal, the tutoring program is coded 0 or 1. If a student is not in the tutoring program, they're coded a zero. If they're in the tutoring program, they're coded a one. There's two schools, school A and B. School A is coded zero, school one, uh, B is coded one. Gender, males are coded zero, females are coded one. Ethnicity, uh, zero is other, white is one. Free reduced lunch, zero, a student is not on free and reduced, one, a student is on free and reduced. And then we have the other variables here. It's important to know this specifically when you're doing regression analysis so that you can interpret the variables. All right, so we said we were going to run a multiple regression analysis, a simultaneous multiple regression analysis. So in order to do that, and let's say what I want to find out is, is I want to find out if the years in the tutoring program um, has any influence on student performance on their grade 11 language arts literacy assessment while I control for other variables that I know does have an influence on students' performance on standardized tests. So I go to the Analyze command, I click on it, I scroll down till I see Regression. Another window pops up and I'm going to select Linear. The window pops up now and all the way over on the left you see all of the variables in the data file. We're going to take a couple of these variables and we're going to throw them over into some of these windows over here. So our dependent variable is, is our grade 11 language arts literacy. So I'm going to highlight that by clicking on it. Then I'm going to hit the arrow to the left of the dependent window and it will put the grade 11 LAL in there. Okay. Now remember, I wanted to find out um, what influence the years in a tutoring program has on student performance on the grade 11 uh, language arts literacy assessment while I control for other variables that I know has an influence on the grade 11 language arts literacy assessment. So I know gender has an influence so I highlight that and I throw it over into my independent window. I know that absenteeism has an influence on student performance in the language arts literacy assessment. I know socioeconomic status has an influence. Socioeconomic status um, in this file is represented by the free and reduced lunch variable. So I highlight that and throw that over into the independent window. And of course my variable of interest which is years in a tutoring program um, I know or I think that that might have an influence on student performance in the grade 11 LAL. So I highlight that and I throw that over into the independent window. Once I have all my variables in place, I click on the statistics button. Another window pops up. You'll see the default model fit and estimates selected. Leave them be, just leave them there. And then you're going to select descriptives, part partial correlation, collinearity diagnostics, and Durbin Watson. And then click continue. Once you've done that, you're ready to run your simultaneous multiple regression analysis. I simply click the OK button and my output window appears. The very first table is descriptive statistics on the variables in the regression analysis. The very first variable in the first row is your dependent variable. So we know that 
in this sample of 214 students, their average grade 11 language arts literacy assessment score is 239.23, which is pretty good considering uh, that proficiency is considered 200. Uh, gender is a dichotomous variable, so the descriptive statistic of 0.3879 mean is kind of a silly uh, statistic because it's dichotomous. The same with the free and reduced lunch is dichotomous. Uh, the 0.3879 is actually kind of telling us, if you really want to uh, interpret this, that, f that males are a little bit uh, larger in group than females. The free and reduced lunch is telling us that um, students not on free and reduced are pretty much a majority of this uh, of this sample. Uh, the best way to do is to just run simple frequency uh, frequencies on both gender and free and reduced lunch since they're both dichotomous. Uh, absenteeism is telling us that on average students are absent one point uh, student is absent 1.7 days a year and the years in the tutoring program on average a student has done 1.3 years in the tutoring program. The next table is the correlation table. It just tells us which one variables have a uh, you know strong correlations with uh, among each other and uh, with the outcome variable. This might become important if we found multicollinearity issues. The next table is the variables entered and removed. It's the actual showing us the actual model, um, how what variables were entered. And then the next three tables are the most important tables. The model summary table tells us, all right, how much of the variability in student performance in the grade 11 LAL is explained by this regression model. We look at the value for R square, we see 0 0.11, 111, turn that into a percentage. It tells us that 11.1% of the variability in student performance on the grade 11 language arts literacy is explained by this regression model, which is pretty good, 11.1%. The ANOVA table tells us if this model is statistically significant. We look at the SIG value, it's 0 0.000, which is less than 0 0.05, so it's telling us that yes, this simultaneous multiple regression model that explains 11.1% of the variability in student performance on a grade 11 LAL is statistically significant. So good. The next thing we do is we take a look at the coefficients table. The coefficients table will tell us out of these four variables which ones are statistically significant. So if we look over, we look at gender, it is not statistically significant. 0 .804 is not less than 0 0.05, so it's not a statistically significant contributor to the model. However, absenteeism is a statistically significant contributor to the model. 0 .001 is statistically significant. We look at the standardized beta, it's negative, so it's telling us, unstandardized beta, I apologize, unstandardized beta, it's telling us, since it's negative, that the more days a student is absent, the worse they perform on the grade 11 LAL. As a matter of fact, for every one day absent a student is, on average, their score is 1.3 points lower, on average. We look now at free and reduced lunch, and surprisingly, free and reduced lunch is not a statistically significant predictor, 0.895. But we do look at the years in the tutoring program, which is our variable of interest, and we find out it is statistically significant. So this is a statistically significant predictor of student performance in the grade 11 LAL when I control for gender, absent, and free and reduced lunch. So it is statistically significant. The unstandardized beta is positive. So what it's saying is, is for the more years spent in the tutoring program, the better the performance in the grade 11 LAL. As a matter of fact, for every one year in the tutoring program, on average, a student's, uh, a student's grade 11 LAL score increases by four points, which is pretty darn good. Uh, the other thing that we can look at is what was called the partial correlations for our two statistically significant variables, absenteeism and years in the program. And this will tell us precisely how much the variable contributes to the model. All I have to do is, is take this partial correlation, 0.237, square it, and turn it into a percentage. If I do that, I get 5.6%, telling me that absenteeism contributes 5.6% of the explained variance in this regression model. 
I do the same thing for the years in a tutoring program. I take 0 0.230 and I square that and it tells me that 5.3% of student performance in the grade 11 LAL can be explained this model by the years in the tutoring program. This also tells us which is the stronger of the variables. So absenteeism just inches out years in a tutoring program as being a smidge stronger than the years in a tutoring program. It's pretty darn close, but uh, it's just a little bit stronger in its contribution to the overall model. The last thing I take a look at are the collinearity statistics. And again, depending on the statistics book you read, um, the general consensus is, is that if your VIF variance inflation factor is less than 10 for the variables, you don't have any multicollinearity issues. If it's greater than 10, then you'd have a multicollinearity issue, meaning that one or more of the variables are so strongly related to one another, um, it's creating a problem with your regression model. And you might want to either drop that variable or combine it if at all possible. Okay, so what we found out here in our multiple simultaneous regression, um, our variable of interest years in the tutoring program is statistically significant in predicting uh, student performance in the grade 11 LAL. It contributes actually 5.3% to the overall variability in the grade 11 LAL when I control for gender, absenteeism, and free and reduced lunch. Additionally, we noticed that absenteeism also is a strong is a, is a predictor in student performance in the grade 11 LAL